In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're very welcome to our celebration. Also, to those who are praying with us online, we include your intentions in our celebration today. Special welcome to Father Andrew from Dallas, Texas, who's completing his studies in Rome, and we pray for his studies and for his trip to Ireland. I did explain to him we don't always have snow like this, so you've brought a blessing to us today. So we now are on the second Sunday of Advent. It's a very short Advent season this year, so we have to make the most of it. As we come to the Lord in our need, we acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill laid low. Let every cliff become a plain, the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger of Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger of Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arm subduing all things to him. The prize of his victory is with him. His trophies are all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms holding them against his breast, and leading to their rest the mother yews. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people. His help is near for those who fear him, his glory will dwell in our land. Response, let us see, O Lord, your mercy. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. Response, let us see, O Lord, your mercy. Give us your saving help. The Lord will make us prosper and our earth shall re yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Response. See, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Peter. There is one thing, my friends, that you must never forget, that with the Lord a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. The Lord is not being slow to carry out his promises, as anybody else might be called slow. But he is being patient with you all, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to change his ways. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then, with a roar, the sky will vanish, 
The elements will catch fire and fall apart. The earth and all that it contains will be burned up. Since everything is coming to an end like this, you should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain so that he will find you at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Please stand for the acclamation. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. To you, o Lord. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look, I am going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him. And as they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of caramel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. We heard in the psalm, one of my favorite psalm verses, because it reminds us that whenever we listen to the word of God, he brings peace. Maybe not a peace we can feel or experience instantly, but deep down, when we come to Mass, when we hear the word proclaimed in the liturgy, when we receive the word made flesh in the Eucharist, we are welcoming the one who comes to bring us the Holy Spirit, spirit of peace, joy, and love. Because Advent is a time of waiting, and waiting in biblical terms always means hope. So we are waiting in hope for the Prince of Peace. That's what it's all about. And that's why we need to, to take stock in a materialistic culture, which celebrates Christmas in its own way, <laughs> with a lot of presses and parties and noise and music, which is not all bad, but which can distract us from making a place in our hearts and homes for the Prince of Peace. That's why it's, it's great to have a crib in the days leading up to Christmas, with a, preferably a crib which doesn't have the baby Jesus in it, to remind us that we're waiting for him, we're longing for him. So the Word of God speaks to us. 
that God is coming. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it. That's a prophecy from long ago, which is still not yet fulfilled, but with the coming of Christ, it is already manifest. Because when Jesus came as a tiny child 2,000 years ago, God was saying to us, this is my son, the beloved, this is the one I love, who comes to, to give you the Holy Spirit. And we heard in the second reading, what we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So everything is coming to an end. I don't think we should be too alarmed about how or when the world is going to end. What is more important is that I am ready for the day I will leave this earth and appear before God for my own particular judgment, which is something I should be concerned about because I know I'm not yet ready. But St. Peter exhausts us, encourages us to live holy and saintly lives while we wait for the new heavens and the new earth. And we all long for a better world. We long for this world to be as God wants it to be. Just think if, want to take one example, there is enough food to feed everyone in the world. If only we would learn to share and stop spending money on arms and stuff that doesn't bring life and peace. So there's a waiting in us. We're yearning to see the glory of God. We could say there's a waiting on God's side. God is waiting for us. He's longing for us to be with him. And so this, this double waiting, we could say, like two friends who can't wait to see each other after being separated for a long time, this waiting finds its, its culmination, its fulfillment in the birth of Jesus. Because once Jesus is born on this world, everything is changed, everything is made new. Even if we don't yet see the glory of God manifested in our world, but we see glimpses. And the mosaic behind me is a glimpse seen by a vision of heaven, seen by the people of Knock many years ago in this parish dedicated to St. John the Baptist, which I think is not an, an accident or a coincidence. It's a God incidence. Because as someone once said, wherever John the Baptist turns up, it means things are going to happen. And we see John the Baptist in the gospel with the camel skin garment, living on locusts and wild honey. A little bit disconcerting. But he is the one who, who sees the Lamb of God. His cousin, his little cousin Jesus, but he sees him in a new way, he says, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he knows that there is someone more powerful than he is, who he is called to proclaim, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And I think whenever there are people who live their faith, they are in a certain way prophets. That doesn't mean we, we go around telling everyone the end is nigh, but that the way we live can say to others, the Lord is near, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and Jesus will come again. We say it every Sunday in the creed. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. We just pray that he may be born in our hearts at Christmas and that we may grow in joyful anticipation of his coming with our mother Mary, who prepares for this time as any mother would, longing to see her new baby and who can help us to hear the word of God to experience the hope and joy that he brings and to find peace that only the Prince of Peace can give. And if you'd like to stand, we profess our faith in the one who comes to bring us peace. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church that we may be a people who witness to the joy of the Prince of Peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for our own parish community, for our sick and those who care for them, for our young people and those seeking work at this time. We ask God to bring his spirit of healing and strength where most needed. Lord, hear us. We pray for our world, particularly for those who don't have enough to eat, for all victims of war and natural disasters, that they may receive the help they need, and that the international community will work to relieve poverty and grow in a culture of life. Lord, hear us. We pray for our dead particularly for those who died recently, Vera Waldron from Ballyhornis and Jimmy Walsh from Clunternan, also Mary Merrick, who died in Quinn Katrina nursing home very recently in Castlebar from Ballyhowley. We entrust all our deceased to the mercy of God. May they rest in his peace. Lord, hear us. We take a moment to entrust to the Lord our own intentions and those who've asked our prayers. Lord, hear us. Loving Father, we thank you for sending your Son to show us your kindness and goodness in the Prince of Peace. May we make a place for him in our hearts and experience the joy you want for all your children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sigi if you'd like to be seated, we do have a collection. If you could pass along the bags at the ends of the rows. If they could be brought to the tables around the sanctuary, I'd be grateful. And we do thank you on behalf of the Shrine for your generosity. Gurumila Mahagwil. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> be pleased, Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh 
and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, with hearts full of hope, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, Shechon, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not well, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Holy Communion, we form a line in the centre aisle of each chapel where possible, and if anyone can only receive from the chalice, they can do so behind the sanctuary. Thank you.
Mother of Christ, hear thou thy people's cry, star of the deep and portal of the sky. Mother of him who thee from nothing made, sinking we strive and call to thee for aid. O oh, by that joy which Gabriel brought to thee, thou virgin first and last, let us thy mercy see. Our Lady of Knock, pray for us. Let us pray. Replenished by this food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, before the final blessing, just uh, to ask God's blessing on any religious objects you may have to be blessed. Let us pray. Almighty Father, please bless all holy pictures, medals, statues, and all religious objects. May the saving presence of Christ be in the hearts of those who use them and in the homes in which they are placed. And we bless them now. In Anamana, Utakasam Vekax, and Spirit Nave. Amen. Just for the funeral arrangements for Mary Merrick, remains will be in Marian Funeral Home tomorrow evening, Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. with removal to this basilica at 8, then her funeral mass Tuesday here at 12 noon in the basilica. That's Mary Merrick from Ballyhowley, recently in the nursing home Queen Katrina in Castlebar. So we pray for her and her family. May she rest in peace. Amen. So many thanks to those who helped with this celebration, to Una, our melody maker, to all those who helped with reading and ministering. Father Andrew, he's finishing a doctorate on the work of Cardinal Ratzinger, also known as Pope Benedict. He's a brave man. We wish him well in his studies and in his return to the States. And just on the way out, you can pick up a, the Pastoral Council biannual newsletter. That's twice a year, right? <laughs> so it's just out if you do pick up a copy. And there is a church gate collection for the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And I'd really like to thank the SVP for the wonderful and often very quiet work they do behind the scenes to help those who are less well off. And they do great work, most of which goes under the radar. So please give generously. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.